The apostolic teaching protects the church from losing the gospel. Let's read this together. Some men came down from Judea and began to teach the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom prescribed by Moses, you cannot be saved. After Paul and Barnabas had engaged them in serious argument and debate, Paul and Barnabas and some others were appointed to go up to the apostles and elders in Jerusalem about this issue. When they had been sent on their way by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of the Gentiles, and they brought great joy to all brothers and sisters. When they arrived at Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church, the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. But some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. See, the problem here is that these people wanted to add something to the gospel. The gospel, we are saved by the gospel. We are saved by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and his death. But these guys wanted to add circumcision. So that their formula, look, the formula of the, of the gospel is this. You believe in Jesus equal being saved. This guy said, you believe in Jesus plus circumcision plus keeping the law equal to being saved. That's not on, right? Because it didn't happen when Paul and them went to preach the gospel. Look at the, the true gospel. See, the true gospels I passed on to you the most important of what I also received. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised on the third day according to the, to the scriptures. This is the true gospel, okay? And because we don't, have, we don't believe the true gospel, we don't know the scriptures and the power of God, we may be mistaken. So this is why it's always good to come back to the scriptures all the time, right? So that we're, we're prevented from being mistaken. The, the apostolic teaching is always there in, 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 the, in the Bible to correct us. And then Paul says that we have this tendency to go after different Jesuses and different gospels. That's what he's saying here in 2 Corinthians 11.4. If a person comes and preaches another Jesus, whom we did not preach, or you receive a different spirit which you had not received, or a different gospel we had, which you had not accepted, you put up with it splendidly. You, you see, we have a tendency to put up with false gospels. Okay? And false gospel includes this, adding something. You know, some people believe, oh, you, you need to believe, but also you need to work, to work in your faith. No, that's wrong, right? You believe and you're saved. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you're saved, the Lord Jesus Christ whom you believe in will continue to change your life. So and you see that in your life being transformed, right? But we have a tendency to always believe the wrong gospel. But Paul then says, even if we are an angel from heaven to preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, a curse be on him. As we've said before, I now say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what is preached, what you received, a curse be on him. So another gospel, if people come to you and say, look, you know, you really need to work out your own salvation, uh, in your own power. Uh, you know there's also the gospel of prosperity where people are promising to you sal as being saved, um, uh, um, you know, healthy, uh, wealthy and wise. If you believe in Jesus, these are false gospels, right? On the one hand, you need to work out your salvation. On the other hand, you believe and everything will go well with you. Maybe you won't die, right? Paul says, if even an angel comes with a gospel that is not biblical, they should be cursed. Okay? Second point, the true gospel saves us by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and makes us holy. Together, the apostles and the elders gathered to consider this matter. After there had been much debate, Paul stood up and said to them, brothers, you are aware that in the early days God made a choice among you. By my mouth the Gentiles should hear the gospel message and believe. And God who knows the heart bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he also did to us. He made no distinction between us and them, cleansing their hearts by faith. Now then why are you testing God by putting a yoke on the disciples' necks that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way as they are. The whole assembly became silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul describe all the signs and wonders God had done through them. After they stopped speaking, James responded, Brothers, listen to me. Simeon has reported 
how God first intervened to take from the Gentile people for his name. And the words of the prophets agree with this, as it is written, After these things I will return and rebuild David's fallen tent. I will rebuild its ruins and set it up again so that the rest of humanity may seek the Lord. Even all the tenters who are called by my name declares the Lord who makes these things known from long ago. Therefore, in my judgment, we should not cause difficulties for those among the tenters who turn to God, but instead we should write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from eating anything that has been strangled, and from blood. For since ancient times, Moses has had those who proclaim him in every city and every Sabbath day, he is read aloud in the synagogues. Then the apostles and the elders with the whole church decided to select men who were among them, and sent them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, Judas called Parsippus, and Silas, both leading men from among the brothers. They wrote, From the apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers and sisters among the Gentiles in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. Greetings. Since we have heard that some without our authorization went out from us and troubled you with their words and unsettled your hearts, we have unanimously decided to select men, sent them to you along with our dearly loved Barnabas and Paul, who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we have sent Judas and Silas who will personally report the same things by word of mouth. For it was the Holy Spirit's decision in ours not to place further burdens on you beyond these requirements, that you abstain from food offered to idols, from blood, from eating anything that has been strangled, and from sexual immorality. You will do well if you keep yourselves from these things. Farewell. This is the word of the Lord. Yeah, so they explain in the meeting, this is the first big conference of the church to decide on the issue of the gospel. How is it that people are saved? Are we saved only by the gospel, by believing Jesus who died for our sins? Or do we need to circumcise people or, and to let them uh, keep the law? And when they met, Peter explained to them that what happened when he went to the Gentiles, he was speaking the gospel, they listened, the Holy Spirit came on them right, and cleansed their hearts and gave them forgiveness of sins. And they had the assurance they were baptized. So there was no um, requirement from God or anyone for them to be circumcised or to keep the law. So he reminded them. See, we, 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 need, we need to be re reminded. While Peter was still speaking these words, this is what happened in Acts 10 when he went to Cornelius' house. The Holy Spirit came down on all those who heard them. You know the, the gospel? The gospel is powerful. If you open your heart to the gospel, it will bring the Holy Spirit into your heart and bring the message of assurance that your sins have been forgiven. And it can change your heart like what he did to Saul. You know, we read about uh, Saul who, when he turned away from Samuel, his heart was renewed. The Holy Spirit can renew you as well. The gospel can renew you as well. And that's what happened when Peter went to the Gentiles. Even Paul reminded Peter, Right? We are Jews by birth, not Gentile sinners yet, because we know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we ourselves have believed in Jesus Christ. This was so that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Because by the works of the law, no human being will be justified. See, it's not by the works of the law, it's just by faith in Christ that our hearts are being renewed, that we're given new birth in Christ, that we grow in holiness and righteousness of character because that's the work of the gospel in us. You believe in Christ, that's equal to life plus righteousness, holiness in Christ until we die and see Jesus and our holiness will be completed. And we are the temple of the living God, right? We are being brought into the temple, to the tent of David, where David himself had fellowship with the Lord. We are being brought in. And because we are the temple of the living God, let us cleanse ourselves from every impurity of the flesh and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. Friends, you need to fear God in order to be holy everywhere. Because if you don't fear God, you only be holy in places. Here uh, in church, maybe at home, or when people are looking at you, when your boss is looking at you at work, when people are not looking and you see that you can do evil, you can, you'll do evil, right? Because there's no fear of God in your heart. You must fear God so that your righteousness will be completed, right? That's, that's what it's being said here. 
And, and, and even, see, this is why they, see, the, the, you remember what, what they told them? Abstain from food offered to idols. The reason why that we should, it's for our holiness. The holiness, because you see, what they sacrifice, when people are offering something to, uh, you know, to, uh, to an idol or something, what they sacrifice, they sacrifice it to demons and not to God. And if we eat the food sacrificed to demons, we are participants. We become united with the demons, right? Uh, I'm not really sure whether there's application of this, but maybe you look around when you go to Chinese restaurants, because a lot of them, they, they do all kinds of um, ancient wor ancestor worships and something like that. But, but we are free. You eat everything that is sold in the meat market, Paul says, without raising any questions for the sake of conscience since Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. So we should not restrict ourselves from eating anything because it's a piece of meat, right, given to us. And... Um, uh, and this is the prohibition against uh, eating blood. Remember that? See, they, they, they forbid them from um, eating food offered to idol and eating blood. Why was that? Because of this, right? Um, if anyone eats blood, I will turn against the person who eats blood and cut him off from, from his people. For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have appointed it, the blood, to you to make atonement. See? This is why you should always go for halal meat when you go down to, um, to the butcher, right? We, we don't eat with blood because the blood is, uh, is there for our, our reconciliation. I, I know that the Jehovah Witness, they even forbid blood transfusion, but that's gone going too far in this, right? Uh, blood transfusion is not eating blood, right? That the, uh, the, the prohibition is again eating meat with blood in it. Uh, and, and then the prohibition against sexual immorality is really so, so, so that's what we're saying, right? What Peter was saying to them and what uh, James was, say, was saying to them, look, you know, the gospel saves us by the grace of God. We only saved by faith in Christ. But if you're saved by faith in Christ, then you are made holy. And these are the holiness codes, right? This is how to keep you from holy, you keep your sanctification, you keep away from sexual immorality. And... Uh, and, and, and so you must always remember that the one who called you, that is God, is holy. And so we are to be holy in all our conduct. Okay, point number three. Together. Uh, the true gospel gives joy to the church, for the Holy Spirit decides not to place further burdens on us. Together. So they were sent off and went down to Antioch. And after gathering the assembly, they delivered the letter. When they read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. Both Judas and Silas, who were also prophet themselves, encouraged the brothers and sisters and strengthened them with a long message. After spending some time there, they were sent back in peace, the brothers and sisters, to those who had sent them. Uh, Paul and Panos, along with many others, remain in Antioch, teaching, proclaiming the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you. Do you see the true gospel always gives us joy because there's no... Uh, no further burdens on us. See, the true gospel saves us without any burden. Okay? And so, even keeping the words of the Lord, see, that's what John 5, 3 and 4 says, his commands are not a burden. Why? Because everyone who's been born of God conquers the world. Right? If you are newborn, if you've been born of God, you don't care much about what the world is saying. Okay? Because you love God more than you love this world, and therefore, you conquer the world. But not only that, you see... Uh, Keeping the word of God is not a burden because we are taught by God to keep those things, right? So here is even loving one another. But brotherly love, you don't need me to write to you because you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. So not only God says love one another, but he also comes in and teaches us to love one another. That's why it's not burdensome to love one another. But not only that, he also works in us, see? You work your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why? Because God is working in you to will and to work according to his good purpose. There's also blessings in keeping the word of God. Look, you know, tithing, I know that some of you, especially you young ones, maybe it's a bit inconsistent, or maybe you look at your money and you think, well, it's a bit of a loss if I give this uh, tenth to the work of the Lord. But you see, there is a blessing, right? You give the full tent to the storehouse so there may be food in my house. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. See if I will not open the floodgates of heaven, pour out a blessing for you. 
See, there is blessing, right? And this is why it's, it is not at all burdensome to keep the word of the Lord. And then lastly, the true gospel is a standard to find out how the churches are doing together. After some time had passed, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit the brothers and sisters in every town where we have preached the word to the Lord and see how they're doing. Barnabas wanted to take along John, who was called Mark. Paul insisted that they should not take along with this man who had deceived them in Pamphylia and had not gone on with them to the work. They had such a sharp disagreement, they parted company, and Barnabas took Mark with him, sailed off to Cyprus. Paul chose Silas and departed after being commended by the brothers and sisters to the grace of the Lord, traveled through Cilicia, strengthening the church. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You see, they wanted to go back, but then they had a sharp disagreement, and then it divides them, right? But you see, the, the, the interesting thing here is that when, they, when Christian leaders are divided, they continue doing the same thing, right? Um, Barnabas went off with John Mark to Cyprus to do the same thing, right? to encourage believers. Paul took Silas, they went on the other way in order to encourage believers, right? Sometimes there can be conflict and disagreements among Christians, amongst believers, but yes, it doesn't stop them from doing the same sort of thing, preaching the gospel, encouraging people, continuing to strengthen the churches, okay? But when you go back to, to preach the gospel, to see how the churches are doing, if we were to ask, how are we doing? Well, what kind of standard should we put up? It's the gospel, isn't it? The gospel is the standard which will put up and see whether our church is doing fine or not, right? So in the church in, um, in Corinth, there was division. People say, I belong to Paul, I belong to Apollos, I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Then Paul says, you bring back the gospel. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or, you know, bitterness and anger and wrath, shouting and slander? It should be removed from us along with all malice. Why? Because of the gospel, see? Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God has forgiven you in Christ. Or if people are leaving you, leaving our church, right? See, 1 John 2, 18, uh, 18 and 19, this is the last hour. Many antichrists are going out from us. If they, they went out from us, they, but they did not belong to us. If they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. However, they went out so that it might be made clear that none of them belongs to us. So you see, gospel tells us you know how to understand all these things that are happening with us even the love of money right you see people loving money in the congregations you should be reminded it's the root of all evil right it makes people wander away from the faith and pierce themselves with many griefs but you you man of god you woman of god you flee from the love of money Right? Flee from that and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Because if you pursue money, you lost it. You pursue godliness, you get everything. Because right? you learn contentment with your money. And as citizens of heaven, that's who we are, we believe in Christ. As citizens of heaven, we must live our lives worthy of the gospel of Christ. Right? And Paul is just saying, you know, to these Philippians, will I come and see you or I'm absent? The apostles and those people who started the church, they want to hear that we are standing firm in one spirit, in one accord, contending together for the faith of the gospel. They defended the gospel. We are saved by the gospel. We should continue to live for the gospel. And we should pass on the gospel to the next generation and the generations after that. Let's pray.